I honestly think Rivian has dropped one of the coolest EV designs of all time with the R3, specifically the R3X. What I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna restyle, redesign the R3X and have it give it a little bit more identity in the front end and also switch out these wheels and tires and see what this would look like with some proper off-road wheel and tire setup. But first of all, let's have a look at this design and then talk about some of the spec and tech while we're doing the redesign. So as you know, they unveiled the R2, which is a smaller R1 SUV basically. And they also surprised us with the R3 and the R3X with at their launch a few weeks ago, I do believe. So here we have the R3X and just have a look at these proportions and this styling. Does it remind you of something? To me, it, this is a proper 70s slash 80s Italian hatchback design. Most of all, what this reminds me of is the Golf Mark 1, the Giugiaro Golf. And this has similar proportions to that and also similar uh, line flow to that. We have the classic Rivian front fascia here, which I do love. I didn't like it at first because it has this product design feel to it. But again, if I think about Rivian as a brand, they, that's how they started. They didn't really have this emotional structure in their design DNA to begin with. So if that's the line that they're gonna go with and they're sticking to it, that's why I think this is still a cool design even though it feels more like a consumer electronics device or something like that. We still have, a, have an expression in the front end. It looks pretty funky and happy, friendly face, this thing. Then we have some LED lights down here at the bottom. But the thing I wanna change here, I wanna redesign the headlights to have them be in line with the top line of the, this main LED bar. And I also want to add some intake right here to make it have some sort of grill in the front and maybe add the Rivian logo in the middle as well and change out this uh, bumper. Maybe have some uh, carbon fiber piece down here or something like that. And last but not least, of course, we got to switch out these wheels. Even though I do love the wheel design, very unique designs. These are wheels that I would not like on any other car than this specific car. I don't uh, really know why. So looking at the side view here, if we compare this to the original styling from Mr. Giugiaro himself. Look at the beautiful chamfers that we have going all around this car. We have a nice chamfer here. This is one detail that I love about pretty much every single Rivian is the use of chamfers because this is something that is going away slowly in the car design world, but they're coming back really strong in the Rivians. We also have a line down here that again, carves out some of this volume in the lower section. And this C pillar, it looks like it's taken straight from the original Golf. And I love that. We also have a spoiler here in the back. And the proportions overall look like this could actually be an internal combustion engine car because we do have this big hood just sticking straight out from the windshield going down here. It feels like we could fit a small little turbo four cylinder or something like that underneath here. Just overall, just a beautiful styling, but it's not hard to create a beautiful style if you have uh, so much inspiration from the original Mark I Golf, the original hatchback, which also of course has a very nice design to it. And again, looking at the chamfers here in the rear, have a look at this. First of all, we have a chamfer going around the key graphics. So it houses the, the taillight uh, hole that we have here in the back. This chamfer going all around it and you can see the top spoiler here. We have some air flowing down and cut shooting out underneath it here. I think this is a cool feature as well. Integrated well in the overall design. And look at this very thick and juicy taillight that we have here and how this sits within. It sits inside of the rear end with two other chamfers, two beautiful chamfers here as well. This big one and then we have one here up top. And what this does, it, it creates a, a uh, limit, a frame for how much the red light can shoot out onto the rest of the car. So you can see that the interior pieces here, the interior panels that are facing towards the light are the things that are lit up with this red brake light. Everything else around it, since it has its framing, it creates a very solid and unique framing for the taillight in the rear end. That's what I love about this rear. Then we have the Rivian logos here in 3D looking nice as well. We have similar styling down low. We don't, I don't think this is an LED light like we have in the front end, but you can see that this uh, sort of elliptical feel down here in the bumper still comes back from the exact styling that we have in the front. So we have a 
continuity all around this design, which I love. It feels like a very grown up design from a very young company. And again, you have this gorgeous chamfer. This is one of the most beautiful chamfers I've seen uh, in, in modern car design. I just love this uh, line that goes all around the greenhouse because what this does, it creates a different reflection of the light. What, no matter what angle you see this from, this big solid chamfer, it just makes it feel like it's carved out of some solid material with the different shades that you get when you look at this from the outside. Now looking at the interior here, and as I've said in my, uh, when, this, when this was unveiled, in comparing this interior to, for example, any Tesla interior, I just can't help but think that this looks so much more upscale than a Tesla interior. The one detail I love about this interior is on the steering wheel. You can see these big wheels that are integrated in the steering wheel. You can see the entire wheel cutting through the spoke. I think that's such a cool design and it's also big enough. So if you have problems with your fingers or don't have this, you know, strong grip or something like that, this is a very good design because they're super easy to adjust. They're not tiny and they're also only two, which doesn't make it too complicated to figure out what it is you're adjusting. Then you have the uh, gauge cluster sitting right here in the dash. You can see that we do have sort of a housing for it because it has these two bars or, or limits on, on both sides. I do think that's a pretty decent integration. I also think this screen feels solid. Not sure about the integration though, because as you can see behind this screen, we have the same shelves or the same chamfers that we looked at in the rear end. So this type of styling here now also comes back in the styling for the interior. I do like these color splashes that we have that has a connection to the exterior color as well. So some of that comes back in in the interior. We have a nice sketch here for the R3X with this designer sketch and the in-house Rivian tent up top, which also is a very cool feature, an option that you can add onto this. But look at the seats here, compare these seats to the regular Tesla seats that they put in pretty much every single car. I just think this has a more upscale, more well-defined and grown up, mature interior than any other Tesla. So with that said, let's jump into the redesign here and let's see what this is going to look like when we're done with it. I wanna make a couple of changes to the front end. Not too much, but just make it, make the, make it have more of a face in the front end. And while we do that, let's have a look at some of the uh, spec and tech for this R3. So it will enter the company's lineup in the next few years, likely as a 2027 model year. So it's still a few years away uh, from going on sale. And it shares the platform with the larger R2, the main model that, that was uh, introduced a few weeks back. It has the same platform, but the wheelbase is five inches shorter. And I do think <laughs> this looks so much cooler than the R2 which to me just looks like another, a shrunken down version of the R1S. So you have two versions, you have the R3X, as I said, and then you have the normal R3. The R3X is sporty and geared, to, geared more towards adventure than the regular R3. And it also has, this is a big deal, the R3X has three electric motors, wider wheels and tires and higher ground clearance. This is the one you want, it, unless you buy the R3, the regular one, and you maybe want to lower it a little bit and put some old school wheels to it and confuse everybody if this is a new goal for what is this driving around. That would be a pretty cool thing to see as well. Maybe I'll make a small little redesign on the normal R3 and make it feel like an old school vintage Golf, first generation Golf with the wheel design and so on. So the wheels are pushed out to the corners and the rear overhang is extremely short, which is great if you take this off road. You can expect the R3 to have a range of about 300 miles, which seems to be a pretty standard number these days. Customers should also have a choice between either a single electric motor for the base R3, powering the rear wheels only, or dual motors for the uh, all-wheel drive version of the R3. And as I said, the R3X comes standard with the three motor setup, which is fantastic. I'm looking forward to see how much power it actually going to have. So there is no pricing yet for the 2027 uh, R3 or R3X, but they'll definitely cost less than the larger R2 models, which is pretty uh, obvious. We wouldn't be surprised if the R3 starts between 35 to $40,000. And then you have the more off-road uh, version, the R3X, starting between 45 and 55,000. So with that said, let's jump into the redesign here and let's have a look at what's going on. So as I said, I wanted to create more of a face for this redesign and also 
have some connection with the lower section of the light of the headlight housings to the body of the car to to the surfacing of the car so i created the zigzag motion for that per portion and in between those you have a small little slot that is the the cooling for the battery or, or a small little grill there in the end i'm also going to add a uh, rivian logo in between the headlights that's backlit and have sort of a very subtle uh, framing for it with a light i think that would look cool and last but not least the lower section of the bumper I didn't really know what I wanted to do there. I had a lot of experimentation uh, done <laughs> with this uh, specific portion of the redesign, but I, w I decided to keep it pretty stock, the lower half of the front end, while still adding a different material. So I wanted to add a, bit, a splash of carbon fiber in the front end, and that will be this elliptical shape where the tow hooks are attached to. And I also wanted to have the uh, amber lights, sort of positioning lights, since this is wider than the R3, even though it doesn't, I, don't, I think it's 88 inches or something like that. If you're wider than 88 inches, then you need to have the Raptor lights that we're all seeing on Raptors and TRXs. This is probably not 88 inches, but it's still cool to have these amber lights being lit up at all the time as soon as you turn on the car. And the wheels and tires. Again, wheels and tires, they just can completely change the look of a car. And I do think they do that here as well. I might maybe want to have it sit a little bit higher than this, specifically in the front end. Now it feels like it sits a little lower, specifically with this sort of wheel and tire setup. But it still has a pretty uh, stand, uh, good standard uh, ride height. So maybe this would work still. Some BF Goodrich all-terrain tires, obviously, with some black wheels. Just look sick on the R3X. So here you can see the before... And then we have the after. I'm gonna to toggle this back and forth a little bit so you can see the changes. No massive changes. The original still looks very cool. I just wanted to play around with the front end and see if I could add some more identity to the front end of the Rivian R3X.